So this is the entrance to the Reichstag Rotopult Baumann. And um, the driveway, which is big enough for big trucks and LKVs, uh, Guido Plata picks up here. And, and I have a, had a lot of friends come by with show trucks, six to eight horses. They can fit through this road absolutely no problem. And there's parking on the Hof for these big trucks as well. Um, the entrance runs along a soccer field where soccer is played every weekend, so that you know. We can ride out here um, into this forest. Most of the trails or the roads are that look just like this one, tree-lined and um, basically some of them you can drive on and some of them are only for horses and, and pedestrians, but you can ride um, a circle around this forest in about 45 minutes or you can ride all the way out to the golf course over four kilometers or so one way. I'm now standing just before the immediate entrance to the Hof and here we have parking for small horse trailers. Just behind the horse trailers is a small arena for jumping. Uh, most of the riding student lessons take place here in this small arena or in the um, small uh, indoor arena at the back of the stable, the back of the Hof. This is the large indoor arena. And if you go to the right side of the entrance here, uh, this is the old part of the Hof from the family Reichstahl Rotopol. And here they have, I'm not sure exactly how many boxes, 20 to 30 pensions riders are stabled here. Um, some horses for handicapped riding. They have their own small arena in the back. This is the house that belongs to the family Rotopol, again on the right side of the street. Uh, my stable is over on the left. My 20 boxes are attached to this, to the indoor arena. There are not boxes on the other side. There's only storage for hay and straw. So my 20 boxes are the only ones in this building. And as you can see, all of the horses in this row have an outdoor, have a window to the outside. Um, very well built. These windows will kip or op open completely to the side. And as you can see, you have a choice of closing the horses in or leaving the bars open so that they can stick their head out like this one is doing now. What are you doing there, sport doggy? Parking for automobiles is right here on the side. You drive out this way toward the soccer field, past the horse trailers and the soccer field that way. We have a Stehtag today, so the stable is quiet. Well, almost. I'm not feeding you yet. Um, these, these boxes are for uh, deep teef boxen, which means uh, deep litter. So they get pulled, um, the stable gets pulled apart once a month. And actually these dividers, the, um, there are doors or the dividers between the stalls are pulled out. Hold on one second, I'm gonna go in to show you. So these dividers, uh, which are the walls between the stalls, they pull out onto the aisle once a month. We just tie the horses up to the fronts of the box and take the whole manure out with the tractor. Very typical for this region. You'll be hard pressed to find a stable that doesn't have deep litter boxes here. Unfortunately, unfortunately that's just the way it is. Um, we do have large bale straw and hay, which is included in the price of the stable. There's 20 boxes. They all have automatic waters. Hold on. There are blanket racks. Um, just a small desk for some things. There is also, this is, is built in, this particular um, storage shrunk, I guess you call it. Uh, this is, this will never disappear. It's absolutely, absolutely solid. And you have halter racks and all kinds of ways to hang blankets in this stable. It's um, a very, very, very practical stable. You will never have bad air in this stable. It's very well ventilated, very well built. This skylight on the top above the boxes, um, there's no lights on right now. And you can see, even though it's a cloudy day in Fechte, uh, or partially cloudy, uh, we get a lot of light in this stable. Horses are always very happy here. So the mirrors are all automated. The covers on the mirrors are all automated. Uh, we have one big side mirror here. This is a 20. It's actually more like a 21 by 52 haul. It's a bit of an odd size. Perfect for training. 
also an arena that gets a lot of light. There's no lights on in here right now, but this skylight and the light on this end, you rarely need the lights on in, in here, even on a very gray day. The footing is by Otto Rideplatz, same type of footing that you have at most of the major shows now. Um, it's got an automated water system. It's kind of hard to see because it sits right at the level of the top of the mirrors. But that, that branch uh, advances uh, sprinkling water over the whole arena, and that's fully automated. You, um, uh, can control the water, and you can set it for certain times of the day. You can put more on the left side of the arena or the right, right side of the arena. It's all control, controllable. That door goes into the tack room. So I'm now looking out the A end of the arena. On this end of the arena, we have a large garage door for bringing the tractor in. Here to the right is a heated, a small heated casino for observation, should you need it. Uh, all of these sliding doors, by the way, you can open on horseback, which is very convenient. If you want to, if you're sitting on your horse in here and you want to go out into the forest to cool him out, you can pull on that upper rail there and slide the door open. Again, a very, very practical stable. I think the easiest, best, de best design stable I've ever worked in. Um, this is a foon, a Kampman foon, which runs on a chip system, so you have to buy the chips. We've got mats on the floor there, and uh, this will dry a horse in about eight minutes, even in the winter season. Again, there's a much needed coat of paint um, in the wash rack, but, oh, sorry. Um, that will come soon and does look very bright and cheery when it's well painted. You've got hot and cold water in here. This is the inside of the observation room. We've put small windows in so in the winter you can kip them or um, if I'm sitting in here to stay warm I can just open the small window and yell at somebody if they're doing wrong. <laughs> uh, back here are two toilets, men and women's. And there's storage space in here for large trunks should you need it. And just outside this casino or warm room is the kitchen where most of my staff take breakfast and lunch. Uh, it's a very cozy kitchen. It's got a trophy case that I just emptied. Um, you can sit in here and eat meals. There, it's a fully equipped kitchen. Uh, also with a no freezer but a refrigerator. There is a, an extra freezer in here. I don't know if that'll be here when I move. We're still discussing that. Very nice room, very well heated. By the way, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, on a Monday. We normally take Mondays off in this stable, but as you can see, there are no hobby riders here. Even though there's at least 20 horses, maybe 25 on the other side, that are um, ridden by people who just come out for fun, they don't show up until 3, 4, more, more, uh, more often 5, 6 o'clock in the, in the evening. Uh, and I do have the use of this arena and the outdoor dressage arena until 2 o'clock every day. So. Basically, I'm alone here whenever I want to be. If I, if I need to do something in the evening, like show a sales horse, um, I ha might have to schedule around some lessons. The Rotepool's uh, daughter, Sandra, she is a, a ridemeister, and she gives some lessons here in the evenings. But other than that, I basically have the use of the arena. So looking out the riding arena here, this is onto the small little jumping field. Um, this is a very very pleasant place to work, very well managed, very well taken care of. Here is a small arena, this is 20 by 40, also an indoor. Uh, tends to get a bit cold in the winter, but I have only ever used it for breaking in and free jumping. So um, this is a pretty helpful arena to have when you're on, when you've got a lot of young horses. Uh, and there's, there's straw storage next to this, also the tractor stays back here, there's a tractor to use of course. And behind these fire nets, fire protection nets, there's also more straw and hay stored back here. This is the other side of the large arena. Here are the inside of the small arena. This does not have a highly technical footing. It's sand and the shavings, so that you know. But like I said, for lunging and free jumping, it's just fine. And this, this arena also has really incredible, incredibly good light during the days. So we rarely turn the lights on in this stable. I'm back in the aisle of my stable and all the horses are going to talk because I just slid the door from the feed room open. Um, this, this is the feed room and you have room for two large silos. I took one down because I, I was only using the silo, uh, silo storage for oats, for whole oats. But there's plenty of room in here to store other things, bags of feed for instance. Um, 
our cats live in here. Really nice. Futricata, how do you say that in English? Cart for the cart for the food. You can store a lot of things in this room. It's a fairly large room. Um, fortunately, I don't have my keys with me, so I can't get in the tack room right now. However, the tack room is right here through this door, and it can hold nine saddles and about 20 bridles. There are shelves for blankets and all kinds of equipment. There's a, a sink in there for cleaning tack and also a large washing machine for washing blankets and saddle pads and things like that. The doors on both ends of the stable split in half, so you can prop only the half, top half open, um, or you can open the bottom half. These close all the way or stay open halfway, however you like. The stable was built in 1998 and I'm the only one who has ever rented it. Um, it's in very, very good shape. So now if you walk along uh, the front of the stable where the horses can stick their heads out, it takes you to the um, outdoor arena. The outdoor arena has its own automated sprinkler system. So um, in the summertime, you need to keep a lot of water on this footing because it's, it is just sand. Um, but when it's wet, it's a super surface to ride on. After it's just rained, it's really absolutely perfect. This is a regulation 20 by 60. Um, on the other side of this arena, there is a pasture for turnout. It's one of the biggest turnouts here. Uh, that has to be shared with other people, but you can put a lot of horses out there all together if you want to. Every ladder on the arena has its own boulder, and between the boulders, some beautiful rose bushes. I love being out here this time of year. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to ride. And at sea, I'll have to give you a different position to show you this. See, we have a bunch of boulders stuck together that we call the lion's den. Um, but this is a super place to show sales horses and make sales videos. You've always got a really nice background. Um, if you want to show horses to buyers out here, it's a fantastic place to do it. It's very, very picturesque. This is the direction back toward the stable. You can see there's a whole lot of, we put a whole lot of trees and and vegetation in there between the stable and the outdoor arena but that's the roof of the stable right there so it's really not very far at all. Um, on the other side of the street over there there are more pastures. Um, I'll have to walk over there so you can see it. But here I'm standing at the outdoor arena and if you follow the path that we came to the outdoor arena on um, just about it's about a three minute walk into a neighborhood. I'll try to show it to you back behind these trees and while there is no house attached to this stable for rent uh, in this neighborhood there are many houses and apartments it's a whole complex of apartments and houses for rent and for sale and it's literal, literal, literally walkable within three, three minutes um, most of my staff lives in this neighborhood somewhere they have apartments all in there so again there's the outdoor arena the stable this is a large pasture that you can put horses on. And it's getting, of course, quite eaten down this time of year, also because we've had literally no rain for weeks. Uh, and on the other side of the street, there's more pasture. This has to be shared with um, the rest of the Pensions Verde, but there are several paddocks back here, large and small. Over here, there's more. Um, so as long as you have a schedule, you can share with other people to put the horses out if you want to. As you can see, this stable is surrounded by a neighborhood. Like I said, there's a ton of houses and apartments for rent all around this stable. So it's easy to find accommodation uh, in a walkable distance. Effect is also a university town, so there's a lot of seasonal rentals that become available. So this road that leads to the stable, um, this is basically a dead-end street because as you reach the end of the stable parking lot, this becomes a bike path or a footpath that leads into the residential complex back there. So people are not allowed to drive on this street. It's actually, therefore, traffic-wise, a very, very quiet place. You get a lot of bicycles, you get a lot of um, people with baby carriages and people walking dogs along here which is actually good for horse show atmosphere, but you don't get any cars on this street. 